everyone, um, and welcome to this session on how to organize a graduate conference with Jonathan Courtney. Um, my name is Bridget and I'll be the MC for this session. So we'll be starting with a 20 minute talk by Jonathan and then we'll move on to a live Q&A session where he'll answer some of your questions. You can submit questions using the box to the right hand side of the video. Um, and you can also vote for your favorite questions to push them higher up the list. Um, but now I'd like to introduce our speaker for this session. So Jonathan completed his BPhil in philosophy at Oxford University before working at Giving What We Can, the Centre for Effective Altruism and the Global Priorities Institute. He's currently enrolled in a PhD in Ethics and Public Affairs at Carleton University in Canada. His research focuses on developing a policy prioritisation framework for Canadian development spending. And he's recently started a new role at Generation Pledge as their community director. Here's Jonathan. Hi there, thanks so much for having me uh, present here at uh, the EA Student Summit. I'm very excited uh, to talk to you all today about how to organize a graduate conference, uh, encouraging EA research in early career academics. Uh, just to give a little bit of background on this talk, uh, my name is Jonathan Courtney. Uh, I'm currently a PhD student uh, in the Ethics and Public Affairs program at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, my research is focusing on how we can essentially implement a effectiveness uh, decision-making criteria into international development spending and try to justify that from like an ethical point of view. Uh, I've also recently started as the uh, director of community at Generation Pledge, uh, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm gonna be speaking uh, entirely as, uh, as PhD me uh, and talking a lot about my recent experiences organizing my uh, department's graduate conference. Uh, so my hope is that if you are a graduate student and you're looking for a way to have an impact, uh, this is one possible avenue for you to explore. All right, so in this talk, I'm gonna have uh, five separate sections. Uh, number one, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think it could be a good idea for you to organize a graduate conference, what are some of the benefits. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, promoting effective altruism uh, via a graduate conference. Uh, what are the methods for doing that? Um, how can we do that in the way that is the most effective? Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about why uh, our current moment in history uh, represents a particularly good time uh, to get involved in your uh, department's graduate conference. Spoilers, uh, it has something to do with the fact that most of these uh, conferences, much like this event right now, uh, are being done uh, digitally and so can uh, expand to uh, connect with a lot more people uh, from, from a lot more different uh, research backgrounds. Uh, fourth, I'm going to talk a little bit about the lessons I've learned uh, through my own experiences uh, organizing my graduate conference and hopefully give you some insights for how you could organize yours uh, even more effectively than that. And then finally, I'm going to list out some next steps if you're interested in this uh, process, if you want to get involved in your graduate conference uh, organization at your department, uh, I'm going to try to talk to you about how to do that. Okay, so why run a graduate conference in the first place? Well, first I'm gonna talk about some generic reasons. So some reasons for why anyone uh, interested in advancing their uh, academic career might want to run a, a graduate conference. Uh, first and probably the most important is the ability to connect with uh, other early uh, stage career researchers uh, in your field. So trying to find other individuals who are graduate students uh, in, on your topic in your field and trying to have them uh, essentially connect to you and your work uh, to get feedback on your work and to uh, just generally uh, start building your network as an academic. I also think uh, one of the really important lessons you learn uh, as part of organizing a graduate conference is how to evaluate the merits of other papers. So to try to do so in a way that is systematic, to try to really dig into what makes a good paper, what ultimately are you looking for uh, as a conference organizer? And uh, yeah, what, what are the qualities that you look for in others' work? And I think reflecting on this helps to crystallize uh, your own views about what makes a good paper uh, and also ultimately uh, is helpful when you're evaluating your own work. Uh, I also think one of the benefits that you get from uh, running a graduate conference is uh, mentorship from excellent uh, and experienced colleagues. So uh, in my case, I've been able to work with some of the uh, people who helped organize previous year's uh, conferences and you get both the ability to uh, you know, get their input on how to run the conference better, but also you get their input on your own uh, academic career on like what things you can do to do better uh, and generally just get more advice, especially if you're you know in your first few years of your graduate studies, I think it's this sort of uh, advice can be really, really helpful. Uh, and then finally, I think you get to develop a bit of a better inside view for what a conference uh, is organizer is looking for. Uh, and this ultimately helps you design your own papers to be 
uh, more impactful and to be more likely to be accepted into conferences you might want to go to in the future. All right, so there's some just generic reasons why, why you might want to run a graduate conference. What are some more uh, specific reasons focused on effective altruism? Well, I think they can more or less be uh, summed up around the theme of developing the uh, EA early career research space. So I think the way I see the value of organizing a graduate conference as an effective altruist is to help uh, develop the space further. So much like the generic benefit uh, I, I talked about earlier, there is a benefit in connecting and forming connections between different re researchers in the EA space. So between yourself and other researchers and between other researchers who come to the conference. Um, I, th I think that there's also a real benefit in helping to introduce EA research topics to non-EA researchers. And we'll talk a little bit more about designing the, the topic for your conference later, but uh, if you've designed it right, you'll be able to attract uh, people just from the general uh, academic space who are interested in topics that are adjacent to effective altruism topics. And so when they're introduced to those uh, via other EA researchers, uh, they might themselves become excited about those topics and research them in the future. I also think there's a real benefit in helping to improve the content being developed by early career EA researchers. So I certainly do much of my best work when I can collaborate with other individuals when I can get direct feedback on an argument or an idea. And I think I'm not alone in this. And so having a more robust network of individuals who are sharing their work with one another, who are essentially helping to build the field together, uh, I think can be uh, extremely valuable. Um, and I think it's valuable also because EAs are, in academia are faced with a very specific challenge, uh, which is to help identify work that is both academically successful so that you know can get published and can advance your academic career, but while that also has an eye to impact, that can also be useful um, for policymakers uh, and, and for addressing some of the fundamental questions that lay at the heart of how we can do the most good. So how do you actually go about uh, shaping your graduate conference to be uh, more in line with, with this goal of promoting EA? Well, I'm going to focus in on just three separate methods. Uh, the first one is designing a topic that fits well with EA. The second one is to invite uh, potentially aligned uh, researchers uh, for your keynote. And then finally is uh, just sort of more generally helping to build this network of really career EA academic researchers um, just via the both the existence of the conference and the way you go about promoting it. Okay, so first topic. So I think the first step in establishing the topic for your conference is to uh, identify the neglected and impactful topics in your space that you want to uh, make space for in the topic uh, that you'll be selecting. So this is just about uh, making your topic on uh, AI alignment research. Although if you can do that in your department, you know, power to you. Uh, it's about designing a topic that is broad enough to include uh, EA related research without, uh, without only being on that topic. So, but first you need to design what topics you're focused on. I think the best way to do that, uh, if you don't already have one in mind, would be to look at uh, the very extensive list developed by 80,000 Hours, uh, which is linked to here, but you can also just uh, find very easily by Googling it. Uh, and then also to take a look at the Global Priorities Institute research agenda. Obviously this is a much better fit for those in say philosophy or economics, but uh, there's potential for other disciplines as well. And I think uh, it could be good to look at it just to get a general sense of the sort of questions that sort of foundational EA research is focused on currently. So once you've identified the sort of general topics, the EA topics you want to promote, you can then shape your theme to help make sure there's room for those topics uh, within the theme. So that helps to ensure both that EAs who write on those topics will be a good fit for your conference, um, but also to ensure that the other people who are at that conference are gonna be you know, one step removed from those EA topics. So um, just to give a concrete example, uh, the conference that uh, I helped organize focused on COVID-19 and issues, ethical issues around COVID-19. Uh, and then one of the major uh, uh, targets I was trying to hit with that topic was uh, to accept papers that are focused on pandemic preparedness. So issues around biosecurity, bio-risk generally obviously fit very nicely into a theme that focuses on the ethics of pandemics, uh, questioning, you know, what, what were government's responses, preparations for pandemics, were they sufficient? from an ethical point of view, uh, and what should we be doing differently next time? Obviously, these are questions that are very uh, interesting from an EA point of view, and this sort of topic makes space for them while also making space for more traditional uh, ethical and political topics. So the second major way that I think you can influence your graduate conference to be more EA is to focus on the keynote. So 
you could try and focus on getting a keynote speaker who works on EA questions. Um, so just some examples for where you can find such speakers, the Global Priority Institute, obviously any of their research fellows would be excellent candidates. Uh, or you could find professors affiliated to uh, aligned EA research organizations, such as JPAL, which I believe have over uh, 70 affiliated uh, professors, all of whom would be uh, great choices for keynotes uh, if that fits the theme uh, and obviously and the department departmental focus that you're that you're uh, making a graduate conference for. So uh, I should also just like flag that not everyone can invite any keynote speaker they want. Uh, often you're constrained both by the institutions uh, that you're that you're affiliated with and, and its reach, its connections, uh, as well as the preferences of your department and, and, and the other organizers as well. So uh, don't fret too much if you can't get your sort of top choice of EA speaker, but I think presenting them as options amongst the list of options you're looking at, maybe if you can, reaching out to some of these individuals themselves um, can be a, a good a good process uh, for, for uh, nudging your, your conference in the right direction. So another really promising pathway to make, uh, to create impact with graduate seminars is, is the potential for building networks of aligned early career EA academics. Um, again, I, I think it'd be super helpful to have groups who are going to advise each other on, on the very difficult problem of how you pursue both high impact research uh, and highly successful academic research at the same time. Uh, these are two very often very different targets. And so finding the uh, Venn diagram overlap between the two of them, I think can be quite challenging. And having other people in your particular discipline trying to figure that out with you, I think can be extremely helpful. So I think, again, encouraging these individuals to comment on each other's work early on in their graduate career uh, is just going to, in expectation, help improve the quantity and quality of future EA academics. And so being part of building that network of connecting individuals to each other of, you know, if you like establishing another node in the network where those individuals can meet, I think it is just going to provide some value. Uh, now, I just want to briefly uh, note why now is a particularly good time to do this, why you shouldn't wait on this. And, you know, if you can take action as soon as you can. Um, and for reasons that I kind of spoiled already, uh, the vast majority of institutions uh, for both the winter 2021 and in all high likelihood fall 2021 as well, will be running their conferences online. Uh, much like this conference, uh, most things are moving online for obvious reasons. Um, so this allows, I think, a particularly good opportunity for, for, this, for these sorts of objectives I've been describing. It allows you to have a global reach to pull in EAs from all around the world. Uh, and to really focus on networking via uh, sort of online tools. Obviously, some institutions have the ability to draw internationally um, all the time, even in normal times. Uh, they have the financial resources to, to fly people out from all over the world, and they have the sort of like uh, credentials to uh, get people to want to fly from all over the world. Um, but that's not the case for every institution. And so especially for those of us who aren't in institutions who are normally in that position, I think this is a particularly good opportunity to, to go international and to really draw in uh, early career researchers uh, into, into a common space online. All right, so now I want to talk a little bit about my experience uh, very briefly with, with organizing my conference, uh, which uh, as of the time of this recording is in the future, but by the time we're speaking Q&A will be in the past, so fingers crossed it went well. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about lessons learned and things that I would like to do, have done differently if I could do it all over again, and hopefully that will help to inform your own decisions uh, when you go about uh, organizing your own graduate conference. Um, so uh, as I've noted earlier, the theme for my conference uh, this, this year was focused on uh, COVID-19, specifically security and justice lessons from the global pandemic. Uh, this theme is, is broad enough to accommodate, you know, the sort of plurality of papers that traditionally our conference is focused on, but also I think gave, gave a particular nod to issues I think are important in the effective altruism community. Uh, as I noted before, pandemic preparedness being, I think, a key angle of attack for, for potential papers. And so my hope was to allow individuals who are working on these sort of topics to have an advantage in, in their applications because they hit the theme so well. Um, and also to uh, present their ideas to an audience who is already interested in this theme and topic. Um, so I want to quickly go over some of the lessons uh, I learned uh, via running this conference. First is a very generic piece of advice, which you'll probably hear from anyone who's organized a conference. And that is to try and get the call for papers out as soon as possible. So I think many individuals, myself included, have experienced the challenge of having uh, things good to go, but then some logistical hurdles come up and you're waiting on this, that, or the other thing, and you're, you end up sending out the call much later than you would have otherwise liked to. Um, I think probably the best defense for that is just getting it to be even more ridiculously early. So as many months in advance of the conference as you can get it. 
Uh, and then if something goes wrong, you're more likely to still have lots of time to, to facilitate uh, people applying. Um, I think one of the other things I would have done differently is thinking more uh, sort of systematically about how to promote the conference in all of the spaces that aligned researchers might be in. I did reach out to a couple of individuals, a couple of mailing lists, but I think I could have been much more systematic in that. And I think it could have led to, to more uh, high impact papers uh, being presented at the conference. Uh, I also think that it's it's a really good idea to reach out to early EA researchers for help. So uh, at least in one instance, I, this I was extremely helpful. Someone was extremely helpful in linking me to other uh, potential app, uh, people to apply to the conference. Uh, and I think if I'd done more one-on-one -on -one networking like this out to existing EA researchers, I think I would be in an even better position. Uh, it also really uh, blends nicely into this like networking goal that I elaborated earlier. Um, Speaking of which, uh, I think if I'd done more one-on-one -on -one networking with researchers who identified uh, who had their content highly aligned with the conference, I think that also would have had a very good outcome. So uh, in at least one instance for one of the presenters, uh, they heard about the conference and ended up applying to the conference because I re re like reached out to them one-on-one -on -one specifically. So if you can find people in the space who you know work on something adjacent to the topic they're talking about, and that are sort of early stage EA researchers, I think just reaching out to them and being like, hey, here's this conference I'm organizing. Here's why I think your topics are really good for it. Would you be interested in applying? Can be a really good way of bringing them in in a way that just general calls out on safe philosophy events or other like large uh, listservs uh, can, is, aren't quite as good in terms of bringing people in. So I also think that this one-on-one -on -one interaction, bringing people in is also a very good way of, of focusing on this building the community aspect of, of the graduate conference. Um, so again, if, if I were to do it all again, I would want to more actively uh, focus on that as an objective. Okay, so talk to you about graduate programs, how to run them, how to make them more effective. You're all excited. You want to, to, want to do one for your next uh, annual graduate conference. Okay, cool. So what are your next steps? Well. I think the very first thing you want to do is reach out to the organizers from this year's slash your previous year's uh, conference to identify how to be on the committee. So how do they end up being the person to organize a conference? Um, for many departments, if you're interested, that's all it takes to, to, to be a part of the conference organization committee. Um, in other cases, there may be a more formal process, but I would talk to them. I would find out if there are any faculty who generally are involved and then maybe talk to them as well. Um, then I would start brainstorming topics that you think would be particularly interesting. Obviously, think about the uh, interests of your department, think about the strengths of your department, think about the connections that the professors might have uh, for potential keynotes, uh, but also just as a just general way of, of pulling people in. Um, and then try to focus in on specific topics that seem like a really good fit. Uh, and then think about potential keynotes uh, that would be a really good fit uh, in the EA space. And then I would say as soon as possible, start, start reaching out through the Effective Altruism Forum and Facebook group to find other EA graduate students in your discipline. So just try reaching out to other people who are say, uh, EA graduate students uh, in philosophy uh, or EA graduate students in economics and start to get a sense of who's out there and what they're working on and whether they would be interested in participating in a conference like this and whether they know other people who might be interested. And that actually ties into a bigger project that you might be interested in doing if you're looking for more ways of helping the EA space uh, in, in as a graduate student. Uh, and that's to build a network of graduate students in your discipline. So as I noted earlier, I think one of the major benefits of a graduate conference is its ability to deepen the networks of EAs who are in graduate school. Um, so one potentially high impact volunteer opportunity then would be to reach out and connect to all of the graduate students working in your discipline who are interested in EA and EA related questions. In some cases, some of these networks already exist. They're sort of informal Facebook groups, um, but in other cases, I think they're, they're, they're entirely nascent. And so I think taking the uh, initiative to bring people together, to create a Facebook group, create some other sort of uh, group, I think that could be incredibly impactful uh, and would be helpful either uh, on its own or alongside your uh, organization of your own graduate program, because then as you uh, organize a conference, you're able to talk to these individuals to see if they're interested in applying or know other people who'd be interested in applying. All right, and a very brief side note, uh, not at all just an excuse to show this uh, a very embarrassing <laughs> photo of myself uh, from when I was an undergraduate. Uh, while everything I've been saying has been focusing on graduate conferences, I think undergraduate conferences are, are could potentially take a lot of this advice on board as well. They're, they're much less common than graduate conferences, but um, if you're an undergraduate and you're watching this out of interest, uh, take a look around, see if your uh, university has an undergraduate conference. Maybe it hasn't run in a couple of years, but maybe you can revive it. I think potentially you can uh, 
uh, accomplish several of the objectives that I outlined in this in this uh, talk uh, at the undergraduate level as well. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, listening to my presentation on why uh, running a graduate conference could be a good idea. If you have any further questions about anything I said, or if you would like to talk about how to create this network of people in your discipline, feel free to uh, shoot me an email at any time. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thanks so much for that super interesting and clear and useful um, talk, Jonathan, and, um, and thanks so much for joining us for this live Q&A now. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to, to hear people's questions. Great, cool. Well, just as a reminder to people at home, you can submit question, questions in the chat, um, but I might start with one of my own. Um, so I think in, in the talk, you, you mentioned this challenge between finding topics that are both um, uh, impactful, um, but also aligned with the academic incentive structure. Um, I was just wondering how you, if you've got any tips for, I guess, identifying topics that you know, fit in the center of that Venn diagram. Yeah, I mean, I think first it's worth noting just like how challenging of a of an objective that is, because both finding a successful academic research topic and finding like successful EA research topics are both independently very challenging. And and as you and as you rightly say, that Venn diagram finding that middle spot makes it even mm -hmm. more challenging. But I think my my general advice would be to start with again in the sort of order I presented in the in the talk, where you identify what your research area is, uh, and again that will probably be determined somewhat by what field of study you're in. And then start talking to your department. Um, ideally, if you have a supervisor who you can talk candidly with, that's like the best way of doing it. Just be very clear that like, hey, I, I like, I really like this area. Is there something in the academic space that's like seen as important that I can work on in the space? Uh, sometimes you don't have that relationship with a supervisor. My suggestion then would just to be to start looking around if there are uh, papers or areas that are interesting. And then, yeah, ultimately talking to um, professors in your department about it, uh, your other colleagues uh, in the in the graduates uh, department about it. I think that's kind of the best way to get a feel of what the how interesting or academically successful feeling the topic is. So yeah, I would say that's that sort of two step process of identify your area of interest and then sort of try and find someone in the department you can talk to about it. Uh, would be my would be my recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um. So we do have one question in the chat now. Um. So are there currently any groups, for example, Facebook groups or site groups for early career EA researchers that you're aware of? Yeah, so there are a couple. Um, so I would, I mean, I would just basically look for your uh, research topic. And I think there's been a few uh, subgroups, usually around, less around uh, academic topics, more around sort of like EA themes. So like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we'll hear a lot later in the, in today about, you know, bias and bio risk and biosecurity. There's obviously lots of groups about that. Um, I would say that there's probably around, uh, those sort of groups. I think there's fewer, at least, at least again, in my preliminary research that maybe I'm just not seeing them, uh, of specifically around like, uh, you know, hist historians who are effective altruists, for example. Um, mm -hmm. I think people who are doing like history, graduate studies research, who are also EAs, I think a group like that could be incredibly impactful to create and to cultivate if you're if you're interested in it so that was why one of those my big call for actions there yeah yeah that makes sense um so we've got a couple of questions about the practicalities of a conference and we don't have that much time but um we can probably get through a couple so how far ahead did you begin to plan your conference and how much effort did it take over this period so uh, effort and time i guess the number of hours per week yeah, that's a great question for determining like yeah, how much you can take on mm -hmm. so in my own case i think we sort of would have started the planning uh, sort of in winter of 2019, but very lightly sort of again that's sort of like establishing the theme, establishing sort of keynote. Um, and then it really wasn't until spring and summer that most of the organization took place. If I had to estimate uh, roughly the amount of time I spent, I would say it was about maybe 30 ish hours, 35 hours distributed over the whole period. Obviously, your mileage may vary. And I had I had was lucky to have support from other committee members as well. But I think the hour the hour cost is not necessarily that high. A lot of it is just having some way of checking in on this on the steps as they go along. Because a lot of things are like, you know, making sure the call has gone out, following up with people who if they haven't sent the full paper yet, these sort of like little small admin tasks. Uh, if you have a good system for doing that already, I think it's a relatively low burden to do that. And then obviously the conference itself, it's sort of like most of those two days are going to be spent doing the conference stuff. But um, yeah, I, I actually found like probably net time is not as is not as big as I would have thought going into it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so there is one other question in the chat, but we probably don't have time to answer it um, now. But I think you've kindly agreed to um, stay on and answer any questions that might come up in the next couple of minutes. So thanks very much for that. 
but um, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap up now. Um, so uh, Jonathan, thanks very much for joining us and everybody at home, thank you for um, listening. And just as a reminder to send us your feedback in the polls, um, that'd be great. But um, yeah, thanks everybody for coming to the session. Thank you.